Hey mamas, it's your Cajun Stork here. Have you been told you need to be monitoring your glucose levels from home and now you have all of this stuff and you're not quite sure exactly what to do with it? Today's video is all the things you need to know about how to monitor your glucose levels at home, including a step-by-step -step demonstration. So keep watching. But before I begin, my name is Midwife Kyra and I believe in truly natural birth because I know that it makes for better birth experiences. Consider subscribing to my channel and joining in today's conversation in the comments below. So let's first talk about why you're monitoring your glucose levels. Your healthcare provider has likely tested you for gestational diabetes or perhaps you're um, monitoring your glucose levels at home for two weeks in place of that nasty glucola test. Monitoring our glucose levels from home requires us to stick our fingers and retrieve a tiny amount of blood so that we can um, use it in this machine I'll show you in just a minute and test our, our glucose levels. Um, your healthcare provider has likely given you guidelines on what are considered normal glucose levels, but we will introduce a little bit about that in today's video as well. So where do you even start? Um, a little bit of information about me you may not have known is that I actually had diabetes as a teenager. And so I know exactly what it's like to all of a sudden be inundated with all of this equipment and feeling a little bit overwhelmed. So let's break it down to the basics. This right here is a glucometer and there are several glucometers on the market. I'm gonna go ahead and post my favorite one in the links below that actually comes in a kit that I recommend to my clients. But basically the glucometer is the, uh, it, it reads the lab value to you. Many of them have this little section right here where it can give you a memory of the most, um, like it stores the most recent lab values on here where you can see and kind of compare um, on there. Now in this um, glucometer at the bottom right there is this tiny little hole where you're going to be introducing your test strips. That's this thing right here. Now test strips are really important. In fact, they're probably as equally as important as the glu glucometer because you can't do anything without them. But you have to be using the right test strips with your glucometer. Um, so it's really important that you make sure that you're buying the correct test strips. Now, one little tip I want to give you guys about test strips is that if you're going to buy them from your local CVS, it can often be almost three times more expensive than what you can find on Amazon right here. And so um, I will tell you that if you know you're going to be testing your glucose levels for, for more than a week or two, it, I would really encourage you to buy these on Amazon where you can get them much cheaper. So here's a look at the test strip here. This is the section that's going to go in the glucometer and this little piece right here on the tip is where we're going to insert our little droplet of blood. So how are we going to get the blood? Well that's where these things come in. Now this is the um, one use lancets that I use in my midwife practice because um, you know I'm running a healthcare facility, a birth center over here. But your doctor is probably going to give you something or your kit probably going to give you something that looks more like this. Um, the midwife who trained me used to call this like the gun. Basically, it is, uh, it has a pullback and a trigger right here. And when you click it, it pokes your finger right here through this tiny little hole to give you a little stick. You would insert the needle into the gun. Where's the needle? Well, it's right there. All I did was pull off this tiny little needle protector. I'm gonna put the cap back on. And when I pull back the trigger, uh, pull back this part and I press the trigger, it's going to poke my finger. You need a method to draw the blood, you need the glucose strips to grab the blood, and you need the glucometer to give you the result. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a sample on how to test your glucose. The first step is the alcohol swab right here. Gonna wanna pull that out and wipe your finger. Now, when you're doing a glucose check, you never want to stick the pad of your finger. It's actually a little bit better to stick slightly on the side of the pad of your finger. I often ask my clients which hand they write with and I use the other one. Now, I've already loaded up my needle into my gun, pushed it back where it clicked, pull back the trigger. Now that the alcohol swab has dried, I'm going to milk my finger just a little tiny bit to push the blood forward without touching the spot I'm going to stick. I'm going to aim it. Let me turn it down a little bit, it's a little high. I'm going to aim it and stick it. There we go. 
See that little tiny bit of blood right there? I'm not even sure if you can see it. It's super, super tiny. Okay, I recommend that you push it forward and wipe away the first bit of blood. Then milk your finger. See that? Now we have a drop. Going to insert the stick. It's telling me that it's ready to draw blood. Let's see if I can do it where you can see it. Pull the blood into the machine and boom, five seconds before I get a reading. So how often do you check your blood sugar? Well, every practitioner is a little bit different, but in my practice, I like you guys to check your fasting glucose levels and it's called a two hour postprandial. What this means is you're going to check your glucose levels two hours after you start eating. So some practitioners prefer for you to check at the one hour postprandial. You'll need to talk with your practitioner about that. What a fasting glucose is, is it's the first glucose of the morning. So I tell my clients, I want you to get up, go pee, and check your glucose levels. Don't drink water, don't start fixing coffee, make this the first thing that you do after going through the whole evening, about eight to 12 hours without eating. Um, your fasting glucose level is the one first thing in the morning, and then I prefer two hour postprandials after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, it's very important that you're consistent in the timing of this. You don't want to do a two-hour postprandial, like you eat lunch, take a rest, and maybe have a snack, and then right before you stick your finger, you have your snack, because then what's going to happen is you're going to get elevated glucose levels. It's important that from the time that you start eating to the time that you check your sugar that you don't sneak in any little snacks. It's a two hours post-meal check. So warning signs that you need to know about. Any reading at or above 200, you need to stop what you're doing and you need to call your healthcare provider because this is a big indicator of actual diabetes and you need um, probably to, you know, get into a practitioner very soon. I like to see levels below 120 at the two hour postprandial. Some practitioners practice 125 and in some circumstances this can be okay. And as far as your fasting glucose, we want to see you at 90 or below. Some practitioners, I've seen maternal fetal medicine physicians really prefer you to be at, um, at 80 or below. It really depends on the practitioner you're working with. But in general, that's kind of what we're looking for. Anything above 140 after two hours is typically something you'll need to chart and keep up with your healthcare provider with too. We really want you to be below 140 and at the two hour we want you to be below 120. Don't forget to talk to your practitioner to make sure that you're following their recommendations on the, their guidelines on your glucose levels and what they want to see. I often recommend that you would do a nutrition diet log while you're checking your glucose levels as this can give you a really clear picture of what's going on in your diet and how that might trigger your glucose levels. Or as I often tell my clients who are being um, on uh, gestational diabetes diets, it's a really positive reinforcement that lets us know that when you eat clean, you get good results. And who doesn't like that? So it's really important that you check appropriately and that you be consistent about it when you make the commitment to checking and that you seek help when your levels may be outside of normal range. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Otherwise, you're going to want to watch my video right here about my alternative in my midwifery practice for the glucola test and how eating pancakes might actually be a much better version. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching this Midwife Monday. Bye-bye.